So Tom, you have been doing all kinds of weaving for many, many years, but you have a special fondness for rugs. So tell me about that. How did you come to be so interested in rug weaving? You know, Anita, it's probably started really very early in my weaving career. Um, my first loom um, was a barn frame loom. Um, came out of New England and it was probably built originally around the 1830s, 1840s and it's just this really massive sturdy loom and it was, it was perfect for weaving rugs and people were telling me as a beginning weaver uh, you ought to try weaving some rugs on it. It's nice and sturdy and it's a whole lot of fun to weave them and they were absolutely right. I love them but growing up in this area, around the central Pennsylvania area, and interested in antiques and historic things anyway, I started looking at the type of carpeting and things that might have been put into the homes of the houses from this era. And um, what I found was that a lot of the homes, first of all, started off with bare floors. Mm -hmm. And a little bit later on, when they were not necessarily recycling their clothing for quilts and things for bedding, they could cut them into thin strips and weave uh, a form of rag rug. But it's funny, it's not the type of rag rug that you would have maybe associated with in uh, today's modern standard, but these type of rugs that were warp-faced. And behind you here, I have one of the antique rugs from my collection. This was probably woven in around 1880, 1890, maybe 1900, but it's typical of the type of rugs that we find in this area. Um, we call them rainbow rugs because of the bright stripes. Um, but up in New England, they might have called them Venetian carpets. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll also put um, wider borders on them, but and maybe just a little bit different arrangement to that. But you find loads of this, and this came out of uh, an attic in a local farmhouse nearby. But I have rescued these things, honestly, from the back of trucks that had been, they're using them to cover up bags of cement and things like that just to oh, keep them dry. Wow. And so I tried to give them a new life again by hauling them home uh -huh. <laughs> and, and then put them in part of the collection. But I love them so much that not only do I collect them, but I try to replicate them. Mm -hmm. And so the other rug that we're looking at back here, that's 100% wool. But you can see it has the same sort of feel is what that Pennsylvania German rainbow rug has. And, you know, my father um, came into the studio one day, and at the time he was in his 70s, and he looked at my loom and he said, um, my gosh, I haven't seen anything like that since I was a little boy. And I said, oh. what do you mean? And he said, I used to have to tear these up off of grandma's floors every spring. And he said, we had carpets just like them. But she put several of them together and you know, at that point it really clicked because if you look at these rugs, the border area and the center field, the center field is twice the width of what that border is. So you could easily just put these rugs side by side and sew them together or tack them down with thumbtacks, uh -huh. um, carpet tacks, something like that. And uh, it became like the forerunner of a wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Oh, so I was wow. like, oh my gosh, this is a man who even knew about things like this, but just never talked about them. So it was nice having that sort of connection. And ever since that, I've just been crazy about weaving these type of rugs as well as all kinds of rugs. Mm -hmm. And finding out that rugs are being woven all over the world. And we even have a common connection here in this country. Um, bound weave. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, there's been lots and lots talked about bound weave and weft-faced rugs. And my mother knew a woman who grew up in Greece and she showed me a vest that she came to this country in. And the two front panels were actually a weft-faced twill. And I oh, thought, wow. how cool is that? Yeah. Yet I always sort of thought of them as like, be like a saddle blanket. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so simple, yeah, rugs, simple, bold patterning. Exactly. So many possibilities, so many traditions to draw from. That's exactly right. And what, I mean, we all like to show off our weaving, and what a magnificent way to make a statement. Absolutely. Bold and graphic, and they're just fantastic. Yeah, and they're right there in your home for everyone to see. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a satisfying. lot of fun weaving them. I really enjoy it. Well, what do you hope that people will take away from this rug video? People who haven't maybe tried a rug before and people who have maybe tried a little bit, but... You know, don't be intimidated by it. And first of all, it's a little bit scary because when you're doing dish towels, you can actually weave a dish towel for very little money. The, the cost of materials is not so great. Mm -hmm. When you're weaving a rag rug, well, 
you know, that's not so bad. The carpet warp's inexpensive and you can either recycle and feel wonderful about taking your children's old t-shirts maybe and putting them and giving them a new life again into that. Or you could go to the fabric store and just buy a bolt of, you know, crazy fabric that's on sale and cut it into strips and put that in. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing something that's weft-faced, uh, maybe 100% wool, it is going to be a little bit more expensive, but mm -hmm. give it a try. You're going to be incredibly proud of it when it's all done. It's a little bit slow going. It's not going to go as fast as maybe, like I said, like with dish towels would be. Right. Um, but my gosh, you're going to have something that you're going to enjoy for decades. Yeah. yeah, that's what I love about so it. So you get to increase your weaving pleasure. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Usually the warping goes pretty fast with a weft face piece, and so you get a chance to really sort of sit at the loom for a long period of time and just keep changing it out and uh, creating those patterns and watching them grow. Mm -hmm. And um, well, it's just an incredible amount of fun. And, and I think one of the really great things about the weft face patterns is that you have the opportunity to design at the loom. Oh, you do, and uh, even with a small selection of colors, mm -hmm. you can keep changing out the treadlings and getting all different kinds of patterns. I, I brought this piece out because I wanted to show it to you, Anita. This is 100% cotton. There's only about four or five colors in here, but just by changing out different treadlings and, and the order in which you throw the colors, created all these marvelous, marvelous patterns that are in this. And I have to be honest with you, I think I have a little bit of attention deficit disorder. I like to change it up quickly and keep changing it frequently as well, because if you have to do a lot of the same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. sometimes you get a little bit tired of it and you don't want to continue on. But to experiment at the loom and to see what happens, you know, look at these marvelous eyes that come out with oh, this Oh, yeah. And then you can get into some really wonderful flame stitch, which is, you know, just really bold, and makes a statement. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, you know, it's a sampler, but it certainly is attractive to put on your table. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I would encourage everybody to not be afraid of it. Just keep trying and see what you get. Oh, yeah. I just love that, Tom. Yeah, rugs are heaps of fun, and we sure had a lot of fun with this video. So Thanks so much. Let's Cheers to you. Let's make more. Chin chin.